Dimitri Baval faces Jean Pascal in the HBO live fight. And HBO said that they're not going to be showing no more boxing, but they showed this boxing fight. So they, they basically lied to us, but that's besides the point. Let's look at how this fight went. Cause this was a amazing fight. I thoroughly enjoyed it myself and Dimitri Baval, he dominated the fight as expected. I don't think anyone saw him losing this fight. I definitely did not see him losing this fight. And after watching the fight, I scored the fight. A complete shout out in favor of Baval. He won every single round, all 12 rounds. I didn't see Pascal win that one round where he did have two or three rounds where he was doing some good work, but he, he was doing good work in the first minute. Then the last two minutes, he was just went back to fighting on his back foot and getting beat up by, um, by Baval. So he couldn't win those rounds in my eyes. One judge actually scored it 117 to 111. And I don't see which rounds you can say he won. Like which three rounds do you have him winning? There's probably one round where I can see him win it if I squint my eyes and take my glasses off and turn my head 180 degrees to the side I can possibly see him winning but besides that round he he didn't really do much to win anything but he did have some good moments which really showed some holes within um Dimitri Baval's performances some holes it's easy fixes use a little duct tape you can fix these holes up it's no problem but let's look at some of the stats of this fight um uh, Baval landed 217 out of 678 total punches for 32 percent and he landed 127 out of 284 power punches for 44 percent and you already know the rule when it comes to for your power punch percentage i ain't gotta repeat it over and over again you know the rule pascal lands 60 out of 357 total punches for 17 percent piss poor performance and he lands 54 out of 239 power punches for 23 percent and as you see just by the stats that Baval. He was throwing more punches. He was more busy. He was landing the better punches and the cleaner punches. But this fight, it showed me that Baval, he's not as strong as he seemed early on within his career. And this is a, it's an ongoing trend that I see with some of the elite fighters. And I could use Keith Thurman as an example. So Keith Thurman and Baval, when they're starting out and like it's early on within the career, they're just knocking people out left and right, up and down, around the corner. Anyone who steps in the ring, they knock them out. But once they start facing the elite competition, they're not knocking them out. And that's literally because when you face the top tier fighters, it's almost impossible to knock them out. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's close to impossible. I had no doubt in my mind that Keith Thurman and Sean Porter was going to go all 12 rounds. I had no doubt that Keith Porter, that Keith Thurman and Sean and Danny Garcia, excuse me, was going to go all 12 rounds. I had no doubt in my mind that Baval and Chilemba was going to go 12 rounds and Baval and Jean Pascal was going to go 12 rounds because these are all top tier fighters within their division. And they don't get knocked down. They have the heart of champions and champions don't get knocked down. They may lose, but they don't get knocked down. Um, after this fight, I believe that this fight truly proved that Baval, he is the best light heavyweight or at least one of, you gotta say at least one of, because if you still think that Kovalev is the best, even though he lost to Alvarez, um, some people still say that Alvarez is the best. Some people still say that Stevenson is the best. Some people say Badu Jack is the best, but I truly believe that Baval is the best. And he actually called out a few people with after the fight in the post fight interview, he called out Alvarez, which is a good call out because Alvarez did beat Kovalev. 
So Baval would be the first mandatory fight or at least like the number one contender for um the belt that Alvarez has. I believe so you gotta take it up with the boxing organizations. I don't really um stay in tune with them and their list of mandatories and number one contenders. He also called out Kovalev as well, even though Kovalev he sort of fell from grace. Baval still had a goal in a dream of fighting and beating Kovalev and that dream does not die even though Kovalev lost. And he also called out Badu Jack, which it didn't really surprise me because Badu Jack, he's really, really good and I like him. But Badu Jack, he didn't beat Stevenson. And Stevenson, he has really good knockout power, but he's just not that good of a boxer. He's not that good of a fighter. And Badu Jack, He's someone who's very technical and tactical with his own power. And I thought he was going to beat Stevenson. And he literally, he literally got a draw with Stevenson because he wasn't active enough and he wasn't doing enough and he wasn't capitalizing on the opportunities. If you go back and look at that fight, the rounds that Stevenson won, he won those rounds because Badu Jack, he did nothing that round. He did absolutely nothing in the rounds that Stevenson won. In the rounds where he were active, he was assaulting Stevenson like he should have been sent to Alcatraz prison. So it, I like Badu Jack. If he is consistent and active for all 12 rounds, I believe he would have the best chance of beating Baval. I, I'm just like spitballing here. You can argue me and debate me on this because Alvarez is really good. I just don't think Alvarez has a strong enough foundation uh, in his fighting skill and technique to see Baval in a boxing match. Kovalev lost his confidence and his defense is really shot. So Badu Jack, if he can stay active for all 12 rounds and maintain his stamina, I believe he has the best chance of beating Baval. And I don't want Baval to lose. I'm not saying I want him to lose. I like Baval. I want him to win. But if I'm being realistic, I think Badu Jack has the best chance to beat him. <laughs> Pascal, you're a punch. 